I think the challenge which comes to, or it is already in pharmaceutical industry is all about data integrity. Uh, producing data without any, any media break yeah, is of an absolute importance for us. Um, I would say compliance, data and mobility. Uh, compliance, because we have to, all of our data that we capture has to be Alcoa, so it has to be attributable, legible, um, contemporaneous, um, original and accurate. Um, and that's something that we've worked with providers, BMX, over the years to, to get us to that point. Um, mobility, it's not as easy as implementing a mobile solution. It has to be compliant, um, it has to be unchallenge unchallengeable, and that's, I think, where, we, where we're at today. Uh, so I still think data and integrity is one of our biggest issues we're still facing. Although the rollout of BMIX has certainly helped, we're still getting a number of issues at the site, so they're slow to adopt the solution. So we need to look for the advantages that we can get from uh, using the technology to move us to paperless and hopefully reduce our data integrity issues. So at the moment in the pharma company we are facing very specific regulations there regarding calibration and I think the main challenge we have at the moment is really about documentation of calibration, managing calibration data. Yeah, from IT point of view that means that we need to react on that requirement uh, to find the right solution and to bring in a more structured data input to the calibration management solution. Well, I think um, up until very recently, and, uh, and probably still now, it's, the, it's Alco Alcoa Plus, like, you know, really uh, data integrity issues in general. Um, the other major challenge we have is that a lot of calibration is being externalized, um, meaning that in the past we would have had internal people on site doing the calibrations, but now we have companies that come in, do the calibrations for us. I think it's going to be more uh, integrated with different other systems like uh, the CMMS system and other type of applications. And I also see that uh, we must increase the speed of uh, how we perform the calibration because it must go quicker and easier. And of course, we need to still have the uh, quality. Um, integration, integration of data. Um, so it's it's not a matter of just gathering calibration data like it used to be in archiving it. Um, it's now a matter of integrating it with data from the systems that we've taken the data from the, the calibrations from and using all of that to build up a big picture of the machine that we're actually working on. So in the next five years definitely it will change into digitalization. Uh, so let's say avoiding media breaks, um, uh, being more and more um, in a partnership with all the contractors which come in. Um, I'm not sure the calibration itself will change that much, but I think the way that the data will be used will change tremendously. So there will be a lot more data usage and I, therefore I think the reliability of that data will go up. So my assumption is that the pure calibration process, how, how you handle really an instrument, there might not be so many changes. But at first again about talking about documentation where we really hope to get that more digitalized, yeah, to get rid of paper, having a complete, completely lean um, digital process in future. That also means for me that uh, while process execution we bring in the right technology, mobile devices and uh, let's say uh, um, improved data input media in place. Uh, which also gives challenge to IT uh, from infrastructure point of view because we need to make sure that we have the right infrastructure in place like wireless solutions, uh, Wi-Fi connection or maybe offline capabilities. I suppose my vision would really be that, so first of all, you know, we're not using any paper, but taking that forward, it's where our external companies are, are coming in with their own tools, doing the job, and then they're literally just sending us a, a, a digital file transfer afterwards when they have their job completed. All technology avoiding media breaks will, will become more and more important and will change our way of calibration. Developing technologies um, with these, uh, in, in this environment, in cloud technology, and so will, let's say, definitely be one of the changes of the next years. So at the moment we're doing a lot on machine learning and predictive maintenance, um, which will lead to hopefully less calibration. So, you know, we look at, we've calibrated this machine 
10 times in the last five years, it hasn't failed. So now let's only calibrate it five times in the next five years. And machine learning has a big part to play in that as well. Um, where I think it's going to automate the whole calibration scheduling and the whole calibration act um, where a user can just step back and say, okay, click a button, go, and it will work end to end seamlessly. And again, always remaining compliance is the, is the thing. And, and um, aligning to the Alcoa goals that I've said previously. So that's how we see it changing. Well, first of all, we're moving towards more paperless integrated solutions. So as our technicians go more paperless for all, our, all activities, calibration will just be one of those routines that is also paperless. So I think we'll use the data more increasingly for diagnostics and trying to increase productivity and, and just make the operator's life more simple by giving them more data available in their hands. So I think the mobile technology is going to be a real driver for that. By the hope of uh, higher grade in, in digitalization, of course, we hope that we have, of course, significant um, improvement in regard of data integrity, but on the other hand, of course, also savings in efficiency. Yeah. And I think this is, this is something, you know, obviously at the moment, like predictive maintenance and digital engineering, they're buzzwords in our industry. And I think sometimes people forget that there's a, there's a very commonly used maintenance pyramid where at the very bottom it's reactive. And then you work your way up where you know, you're doing preventative maintenance, you're doing condition-based maintenance, predictive, and then it's proactive. So it's, it's really encompassing that entire triangle. Um, I think the other side is that we're moving to a more mobile digital workforce as well. Um, obviously with the latest version of CMX and B-Mobile, we now have a situation where you know, our, our, our technicians are able to go into the field, particularly in hazardous areas where there's no Wi-Fi, with a tablet that they can hold in one hand, which is a massive improvement on the past where they needed a, literally a backpack to, to carry it in front of them. So we will go digital, definitely. So um, we see our company going this uh, already. We see other companies going this already. It's not only on calibration, it's in all fields of uh, processing data. Yeah? So uh, I think um, being on paper in five years, nobody will talk about that anymore. More, more data analytics, we, we're collecting a lot of data and we use the data for like planning for the future and say if we can use big amount of data from calibration we can prepare and say okay we don't need to calibrate them so often or we can change the way of calibration and uh... in the three to five year period I think it's just about making it easier for the technicians to, to do calibration um, and again that will be with mobility you need the data that we're historically collecting so that we can analyze where machine learning fits best but I would say that's the biggest change that's coming. Um, and obviously, Internet 4.0 and all, all, all of those things will play a part where everything is connected and everything is integrated. So the digital revolution is exciting and lots of people are investing in it heavily. I think the area that it's going to amplify is the vulnerability of the OT space, operational technology. With cybercrime uh, going up, we're seeing a number of suppliers that are more integrated into ourselves being victims of cybercrime themselves and that having a secondary impact on us. So I think we're going to see a growth in that interconnectivity between companies as they offer services to each other, but I think we're also going to see um, an increased focus on OT cybersecurity.